Well, Andre Agassi came out and said in a Swiss newspaper, Le Matin, something like that, we'll look at it in a second, he said that Roger Federer can't claim to be the GOAT, as Mr. GOAT jumps down, he can't claim to be the greatest of all time when he's lost so many matches to, you guessed it, Rafa Nadal. So in today's episode of Coffee Break Tennis, we're going to break that one down and debunk the head-to-head -head myth. Welcome to Coffee Break Tennis. I am your host, Matt Bradshaw. Coffee Break Tennis is the fastest growing, most exciting, intelligent, awesome tennis talk show in the world on the internet. This is the show that actually makes your tennis IQ get higher and higher. That's right, just from watching the show, you actually get smarter with tennis IQ. You can't promise anything else. Coffee Break Tennis is brought to you by Crunch Time Coaching. Crunch Time Coaching is a tennis player's ultimate resource, a tennis player's best friend. If you want to get better at playing tennis, you got to check out this YouTube channel. Speaking of YouTube channels, Coffee Break Tennis is going to have its very own YouTube channel. So click up here right now if you're on the YouTube app. Look in the description down below for the links you can get on our alert list. Be one of the first ones to subscribe to the new Coffee Break Tennis YouTube channel. It will really help me a lot in getting this thing up off the ground and running for 2018. Very excited about that. So today we got three reasons why Andre Agassi is wrong. There were some mistakes. Wish we wouldn't have done that. And I'm going to debunk the head-to-head -head myth that says Federer can't be greater than Nadal, even if he has more accomplishments in his career because of the head-to-head -head record. Uh, before we do that, let's address something from the mailbag. Uh, I don't do the mailbag too often, but we got a comment from a few videos ago, and I've been thinking about it every day. So good job, commenter. You got it in my brain. This is from VZRTZ. He says, put it on the screen, 30% information in this video. And I said, today, your concern will be addresses, I mean addressed, in my next video. So this is the next video that you're watching right now. And what I've done for VZRTZ is I'm going to put, what do he say, 30% information? We're going to put an info meter, right where it says crunch time coaching. Is it there or there? I'm going to put the info meter. And as the video progresses, uh, the percentage of information that I'm spewing that's useful, it's going to make the meter go up. And when I get off topic it's gonna make the meter go down. So that'll make this very fun when I'm editing this video. So before we get going, let me read the exact line that Agassi used. He said in a, a Swiss newspaper, Le, Le Matin, Le, Le Matin, L-E-M-A-T-I-N, I think it's Le Matin, Le Matin, he said, a player cannot be considered the best of all time if he has been beaten so many times by one opponent. So Andre Agassi's line of thinking suggests that head-to-head -head is the most important statistic when we're trying to determine the greater of two different players, two different careers. You know, it's funny, I'm surprised, Lou Matin, I'm surprised that the Express didn't run with this story. You know, I've been making fun of Express, how they'll take uh, one line, one quote from anyone and run a big story about it when really, you know, they got nothing in the whole article. <laughs> you go through a bunch of fluff just to find the one quote. I'm shocked that this story wasn't in Express. Son of... Well, Mr. Goat has informed me it was an Express. So, let's go to the Express. Rafa Nadal is to blame for Roger Federer not being the greatest ever. Andre Agassi, according to Andre Agassi. So, hey, if you don't want to watch this whole video, let me do it for you real quick. Let's break it down with just three. I'm going to give you three stats for why this is wrong. Let me find it. Stat number one, Jim Courier, Andre Agassi. Let's break it down real quick. Jim Courier, great career. Uh, four slams. He had two French Opens, two U.S. Opens. Andre Agassi, eight. He doubled the slam count. And, of course, he's got the career Grand Slam. Only one of five people to do that, which would be Federer, Djokovic, Agassi, Rod Laver. Who am I forgetting? Who am I forgetting? Rafa. Rafa Nadal. Five guys have accomplished that. Agassi's one of them. Big time, right? Better career than Jim Courier. Well, if we use Agassi's method and we consider the head-to-head -to, -head to be the end-all, be-all stat, Jim Courier, better player, better career than Andre Agassi. 7-5 head-to-head. Moving on, second stat. Let's talk about Nadal, since this video is about Rafa and Roger. Nadal, five wins, six wins to Nikolai Davidenko. Some of you guys might not even know who Davidenko is. I'll never forget Davidenko. I'll never forget the year I will, I actually did ironically forget the year. Uh oh, that meter, it's going down. Info meter going down. Oh snap. Um, I remember 
going to the Miami final one year, the Miami Masters tournament. I had finals tickets, don't remember what year. It was the year that Nadal lost to Dabby Dinko. We were running late. We knew that Nadal was down a set. We thought Nadal's gonna come back in a three-setter and we got plenty of time. And when we get there, why is everyone leaving? Where's everyone going? Dabby Dinko blew Nadal off the court in straight sets. Now, Nadal's the king of clay. And I like to do this, I'm gonna do it later with the Federer head-to-head, -head. obviously. Everyone knew I was probably gonna do that. Nadal, if you take away his clay victories against Davidenko, he's only got one win. Six to one is their head-to-head. -head. So let's just say that Davidenko is a better hard court player than Nadal. If we only look at head-to-head, -head, Davidenko leads their head-to-head -head on hard courts six to one. And in his six victories, he's only dropped one set to Nadal. So that would look like, yeah, that guy's clearly the better hard court player. Only problem is, Davidenko never won the U.S. Open. He's never won the Australian Open. Of course, Rafa has. Rafa, clearly the better hardcore tennis career. All right, third statistic to really quickly prove to you why this is nonsense. You guys heard of Rod Laver. You guys heard of Jimmy Connors. Both great legends. Obviously, most people, since Laver, all four majors in one year, did it twice. Most people are going to say Rod Laver better career than Jimmy Connors. But if we only use the Agassi metric, the head-to-head, -head, Connors leads three to zero. And the biggest problem of that of all is the fact that in those three victories that Connors has, he's in his mid-20s. Rod Laver, almost 40. The last time they played, Rod Laver was 39 years old. So clearly, we can't use the head-to-head -to, -head to determine who's better, Laver or Connors. I'll give you a couple bonuses. You guys ever heard of Andres Gomez? I'm sure a lot of you haven't. Andre Agassi's heard of the guy because he's got a losing head-to-head -head record against him. Another bonus for Andre Agassi, losing head-to-head -head record to Juan Carlos Ferrero, who won, I believe, two majors, or is it one? Did he just get one? Either way, it's a lot less than eight, but he's winning the head-to-head. -head. So Andre, is Juan Carlos Ferrero a bigger legend of the game than you are? It's nonsense. I'm very upset about this one. So I'm gonna be unbiased. Let's dive into my three, ra my three raisins meter is just plummeting. Let's dive into my three reasons why the head-to-head -head myth is nonsense and you can't say Rafa is better than Roger based solely on the head-to-head. -head. Reason number one, the age gap. Now, with Roger and Rafa, there's a slight caveat here because the age gap hasn't affected them the way that it could, but it's still a good point when we're pointing out the nonsense of using head-to-head -head as our number one stat to define who's had a better career. Roger Federer is five years older than Rafa Nadal. So in a sport like tennis, where most people are retiring in their early 30s, like we just heard news that uh, you know Andy Murray's hip problem could be a really serious problem. A lot of people are worried, what if he has to retire because of it? I'm not saying that's gonna happen, but the point is, Andy Murray's 30 years old, or 31, one or the other. Either way, he's in his early 30s. He could, it's not impossible to imagine, he could have to retire way before Roger Federer, who's still winning, slams 36. Let me tell you about my mineral water for a second as we watch the, uh, the info meter plummet down. Less info. What percentage of info has been put in this video? Well, the thing about mineral water is it's a great way to cleanse your palate so you can better taste the natural taste of your coffee. Do you like your coffee black? I do. If I put the info meter over there and I'm staring down here, I'm gonna go nuts. All right, let's raise that info meter. My point about the age gap is, in a sport where most people are retiring at early 30s, five years could make a really big difference. So, like I said, it doesn't work the best for Roger and Rafa, because when they first meet in Miami, Rafa's a teenager, Roger's in his 20s, has won big tournaments, he's already on a roll, Rafa's up and coming, Rafa wins. We flip it to the other side, and I can argue, hey, when there's that age gap, on the back end of one career, you might get a lot of losses to the younger player. It's not necessarily fair. Well, Roger, on the back end of his career, has won five matches in a row against Rafa. So it doesn't work 100% for them. But I gotta point it out, the age gap is a good reason why we can't use the head-to-head -head as the end-all, be-all stat. The best way to point that out, Yvonne Lindell, Andre Agassi. Lindell leads the head-to-head -head six to two. But if you look at that head-to-head, -head, now this is good for them because uh, I do like the head-to-head -head as a tiebreaker, but this illustrates how even as a tiebreaker, it's not the best way because Lindell's got eight majors, Agassi's got eight majors. So they're dead even in the major count. 
So we could argue the career slam where uh, Agassiz won on all four, won at all four majors. Lindell could never win at Wimbledon. We could say that's an Agassiz favor to be the better player. We could say Lindell was a more dominant. He was number one in the world longer, more dominant when he ruled tennis than Agassiz was. <laughs> We could say that Agassi had more talent and wasted more of his talent, and Lindell maximized his talent. We could also use the head-to-head, -head, but I don't think that's the best one, and this is why. 6-2 Lindell, all six of those wins. This is the way it went. First six times they meet, Lindell wins. Agassi is literally a teenager in all six of those matches. They're all in the 80s. Then they got two matches in the 90s where Agassi's in his 20s, Lindell's on his way out, he's older now, Agassi wins both of those. If Lindell would have dragged out his retirement and said, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I'm stubborn, I want to lose more matches to Agassi before I retire, they could have drawn even. Who knows? It doesn't work. It's just, it's not a great way to figure out who's better because, yeah, Lindell better beat up on young teen up and coming Agassi. Oh, yeah. And Agassi better beat up on aging Lindell. Unfortunately for Agassi, he only got two shots to do that on the aging Lindell, whereas Lindell had six chances to whoop up on young teenager Andre Agassi. Reason number two is the surface. Now, Rafa, undisputed, greatest ever clay court tennis player. But one of the things is, Roger did a lot of winning on clay, too, in some of those, those years where they're both on top of the, well, they're both on top of the sport right now. <laughs> oh, the joy! When Rafa still had never lost a match at the French Open, remember, we went years and years with Rafa winning it. He's never lost. He won it his first time playing. So during those years, Roger was the guy who kept showing up in the final at the French and other clay tournaments as well to challenge Rafa. No one else made it there. Roger did it. What is his reward for that? 13 losses. So Rafa leads the head-to-head -head 23 to 15, but 15 of their matches were on clay, and Roger lost almost all of those. He only won two of the 15 clay court matches. So if we take away the 13 wins for Rafa, 23 becomes 10. If we take away the two clay wins for Roger, 15 becomes 13. Federer leads Rafa 13 to 10 when you don't count clay. And that's not fair because clay is a part of tennis. We can't take clay away. But we can point out that they haven't met on grass but only three times. Roger leads that head-to-head. -head. Indoor fast courts, they've met much less, I believe, seven times. Let me look it up to be sure. Seven indoor matches, Roger leads that count six to one. A good argument that I've heard in the past, it's not perfect, but it has merit to it, is that Roger did his job in getting to those clay court finals and losing to Rafa. Rafa, however, didn't meet Roger in the final of grass court tournaments, more hard court tournaments, fast indoor tournaments where Roger only one loss. Roger's only lost to Rafa indoor one time. Roger's only lost on grass to Rafa one time. So we gotta point it out, yes, it's not fair to say, oh, take away the clay because he's the king of clay. He's the king of clay. He gets those wins. It's a part of tennis. But when it comes to being the better player overall, Roger's winning on all the other surfaces in the head-to-head -head count. Yeah, things went really well for me. We can't take away the clay court matches, but we got to point out when we're, we're weighing this head-to-head, -head, Rafa, undisputed greatest clay court player of all time. Roger can still be the greatest overall tennis player of all time. And that brings me to reason number three, which backs up what I just said. Roger can say he's the best overall surface player, the best tennis player in general of all time, because he's got all the records. Reason number three is the records. Roger's got the Grand Slam record. That's the most important one. 19 majors, 16 majors. I'll point out, Rafa still has time to catch up. Rafa still can finish the history book saying he's the greatest of all time. But let's just look at some records that Roger holds that Rafa doesn't hold. Records that make, in my opinion, in most people's opinion, Roger the greatest. Of course, the 19 to 16 Grand Slam count. 29 Slam Finals versus Rafa's 23 Slam Finals. 302 weeks ranked number one in the world. Rafa 159. Consecutive weeks at number one in the world. Because remember, Rafa's number one right now. So next week, 159 is going to be 160. 
Fed has the record, though, for consecutive weeks with 237. Rafa's best run is number one, 56 weeks. Year end number one finishes. Rafa's got four of those trophies. He just added a new one in November. Roger, five. Still ahead of Rafa. Like I said, Rafa can catch up. Rafa can take the records. He can be the GOAT. He can be the greatest of all time. But for all intents and purposes, as of Friday, December 22nd, Roger, greatest tennis player all time. He's got all the records. Well, that's it for me. Uh, Mr. GOAT did not come back. Merry Christmas out there. Happy New Year's. Happy Holidays. Hope you guys are having fun. Uh, the info meter really shot up. I just said a lot of info, a lot of stats. That helps. I might have to do that more often. Let me know if this is a better way to do the show. Do you like the info meter? Do I gotta stay above 30% to keep the people happy? Like I said earlier, don't forget, click up here, get on an alert list so you will not miss any very big news. I really want to cover tennis aggressively next year. I'm going to be the Roger Federer with the aggressive footwork getting inside the baseline of covering tennis news. I want to thank you guys for making Coffee Break Tennis such a thing. Uh, you know, everyone out there who watches and gives me a thumbs up and puts a comment below. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to Pete. We, uh, we, we love it. We love that you guys have helped make Coffee Break Tennis a success this year. Can't wait to really dig in and work my hardest to make Coffee Break Tennis even more of a success and a thing in 2018. So, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays out there from Matt. Uh, I wish Mr. Goat was over here to say goodbye. 